Hello my soccer universe, to a recap of a day that was initially full of surprises, at least the first one was a big surprise, the second one actually did not come as a surprise, then we had a grudge match between <laughs> Croatia and Canada, and in the end we had probably the most anticipated game um, of the entire group stage that ended in the end in a draw and did not actually give us fireworks. Although, if you remember my preview, I already said this might not be as good as you think it is. Uh, the long and short of it, I think Croatia impressed. Germany is alive and I don't know what the heck is going on with certain teams. I'm looking squarely at Belgium, uh, who I think will not make it out of the group session. I think even that I kind of saw coming. So yeah, I don't want to pet too much myself because I have to go back if, if I really said that, but it was really, really interesting. Uh, the team that definitely has to kick themselves the most, by far the most, is Japan. You just cannot lose this game. Because suddenly from being in a very advantageous position of advancing, you're now almost in the worst position of advancing. Uh, maybe you can get some. You, you definitely need help because uh, I don't think you will need. You will beat Spain, not the way you showed up. So yeah, uh, we had again a day without a nil nil. Great, however, goal goal average still went down because we had three games that were uh, two goals or less, and that always means going down, going down. Even the five goals from uh, Croatia against Canada did not boost it high enough. So yeah, I'm um, not going all that great. I wonder at this rate whether we're gonna have the worst scoring World Cup, you know, but Italia 90, uh, that's a pretty bad goal average to beat. So we gotta see about that too. I would say we'll start in Group E, which turns out to be probably one of the most interesting groups. All are still alive and it's all down to another absolutely freak result between Costa Rica and Japan. Uh, again, uh, this game and the uh, Morocco game, I did not follow all that much because we were visiting family. And, you know, I saw highlights and I uh, read a little bit up, up on it. But suffice it to say, uh, not too much that I can tell you about this. Uh, from what I could gather is that that was an awful game that uh, even Japan couldn't really create chances, however, they were a little bit more going forward. Uh, Costa Rica just defending all again, and then with their first shot on goal in the tournament, coming in the 81st minute of their second game. They scored a winner through Fuller, because in the build below play, uh, Tejeda intercepts the ball and gets it to Fuller, and he, I have to say that the shot was actually well taken, although the goalie was also kind of there was not a bad goal and it is a 1-0 for Costa Rica and Japan having a pretty big chance to equalize which would have served them actually really 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 well um, in the larger scheme of things but it was not meant to be in Costa Rica get that win at that point it was already clear no matter how Spain Germany ends Germany are still in the running that was a huge boost for them Definitely. That, that was a huge boost. And then uh, Spain, Germany, also almost as expected, I want to say, that, uh, you know, Spain controlled the ball. Germany tried to hit them with physicality. Um, Spain having already very early on a pretty big chance through Dani Olmo, where Neuer got in there. But, you know, Germany kept it tight in the, in the midfield. Havertz coming out, Müller starting. I think this was interesting. And Havertz didn't even come on at all. Uh, Germany kept it rather compact in midfield, so Spain had to come from the outside and the few times that Spain was actually um, uh, dangerous, they actually mixed up the midfield enough, caused enough confusion that they could move forward, but um, was not the greatest of halves, and then Rüdiger scores the go-ahead goal, uh, seemingly, but it's rightly so called for offside. Uh, also, Ferran Torres missed a really, really big chance, but again, he would have there would have been offside. I think it was Olmo in the in the build-up. So, kind of log logically, it ended nil-nil. Uh, second half started a little bit more um, uh, dynamic, but then again, very quickly descended into being uh, the same as in the first half. However, Morata came on for Ferran Torres and Alba unlocked it. 
he put a cross in it, Morata uh, just gets ahead there of Sule and really nicely puts it in, in the internet and then shortly thereafter even Ansensio had a pretty big chance where he takes it directly. I think he had the time to stop the ball and actually take a good shot. That could have turned the game right there and then. Uh, if that is 2-0. But then uh, Germany reacted and I have to say I found Luis Enrique's exchanges not very uh, inspired. Bringing Koke and Nico Williams for Gavi and Asensio. Uh, I I hope those two were tired. But what I think that Hansi Flick has, maybe he has not the greatest, he doesn't have the real star in there, but you know, being uh, uh, able to bring on Sané uh, then he also brought Phil Krug and Klostermann and especially Sané and Phil Krug uh, were in a thorn in the side of Spain and, they, and Germany suddenly created a few chances and they even get the equalizer through Musiala who uh, before that probably should have already scored. Um, I found him rather anonymous in the first half and second half. A lot of good actions for Germany went through Musiala and he intercepts the ball and you know, kind of stumbles it to Phil Krug who then takes a shot. And that's another amazing story, uh, a little bit like Kramer in 2014. He had just made his debut in a friendly ahead of the World Cup against Oman. And now he scores a vital equal. Uh, I don't know how vital, but you know, it keeps Germany, stay. it definitely lifts the mood because now Germany has at least a point. They have scored uh, the goal and then actually they were pushing forward. Uh, I think it was then, if there was another goal, it would have been more coming for Germany. But overall, I think the draw was the just result there. Uh, leaving the group wide open with Spain enjoying a good advantage, having the most points and also by far the best goal difference. So, uh, you know, uh, let's go to Group F where, yeah, we can say goodbye to the golden generation of Belgium. I think it's now official that this Morocco team, like Canada before, outplayed them most of the time. Belgium looked tired, Belgium looked every bit as old as De Bruyne claimed as they are and yeah Morocco got the deserved it's a deserved, deserved win uh, they already had the goal this a lot before they have through Ziyech uh, it was one of those like armpit of sides more or less um, the go ahead goal then came after a flurry of changes for, 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 for the Moroccan team uh, when a Sabiri kick uh, free kick a little bit you know close to the touch line but on far out goes in and Romain says from um, Rennes is standing there a little bit I, I don't want to say obstructing um, Courtois because it's not obstructing he's standing just uh, he moved there he's not offside he moved there and he gets the third ta -ta 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 -ta. at this moment it's really really hard for Courtois to react and he was definitely so so surprised by the, by the free kick and then you know Belgium tried a few things brought in all, even on Lukaku uh, but it was a little bit too, too late and then uh, in stoppage time they make the second goal Zieg, um setting up Abu Kari, uh, Abu Kial, sorry and uh, it was a famous win for Morocco uh, in a stadium that was all for Morocco uh, it was quite a sight to see and yeah uh, it will not be an easy move for Belgium to get out of this group from what we have seen and the last one is it's a little bit of a sad one I gotta say uh, because I think Canada was easily one of the most entertaining teams at the tournament so far and they started out well within two minutes they get their first ever World Cup goal through their star uh, Davis who converts with a, a brilliant header across by Buchanan and then Canada, I would say for 20, 25, five minutes, actually really uh, played hard on Croatia. Um, however, the Croatian midfield slowly and assuredly took control of that game. Uh, the Kramaric goal was already uh, disallowed, but then Perisic, what a brilliantly threaded pass to Kramaric who makes gets the equalizer and I actually thought maybe an equalizer is not bad for, for this group because it will make it really really interesting then uh, Morocco 4, Belgium 3, Croatia 2 and Canada 1 point however the longer the game went on Canada could not wrestle back I mean it was all intensity but Croatia's midfield very experienced midfield is just too good for this Canada side and uh, it was before the half 
that uh, Livaya gives them the go-ahead goal. Uh, second half, Osorio comes on, has two chances for Canada. But again, uh, it went quickly up in smoke. And as soon as Perisic assists another Kramaric goal, the writing was on the wall for Canada. And in stoppage time, Maya makes it uh, 4-1. And then there were other chances as well. Uh, Canada out already. And they knew that with this loss there, they're out. I think the biggest problem for Canada in that was is that uh, their coach, Herdman, in the emotion after the Belgium game, uh, used an F-bomb uh, on Croatia, which got completely thrown out of proportion by the Croatian media and then by the team and, and so on. So he got the bulletin uh, material up there and Croatia took full advantage and um, got the do win over Canada. And as I said, today Croatia were the much better team. Canada should not be out yet because they should have gotten a result against Belgium and probably even have won against Belgium. That's as much as I can say. But it's vital World Cup experience for Canada. Now they're going to host the World Cup and wait for it. I think Canada can uh, surprise us all at this particular World Cup. So if you look at now at the standings, um, as I said, Group E is wide open. Uh, it's very important to note, and I will see it later, that Spain will play Japan and Germany will play Costa Rica. Uh, Spain has a huge advantage with, with goal diff difference. Even if they would lose to Japan, then Japan win the group, but Germany would need to run up the score. It depends, you know, let's say uh, Japan wins by one, and uh, um, Spain has plus six with four points. Germany will not be able to reach until they also beat Costa Rica by seven. Really, really, really tough ask, I gotta say. So Spain, there is a submission of a chance that they get eliminated, uh, namely if uh, Japan and Costa Rica both win, which is uh, rather unlikely, I would say. That's the easiest route I can have, but, but with goal difference, Spain will not be uh, going behind Germany. That much I can say already. Now, uh, if everything ends up in the draw, then Japan will go through. I think there's a lot of permutations in there. Uh, Germany is not even through with a win for sure. Because they would only overtake Costa Rica and then depends what Spain will do against Japan. So a really interesting group. Uh, similar also Group F. And uh, ag again, we have now Croatia having to play uh, Belgium. Straight shootout for who's going on because Morocco probably could get a point against Canada. But no, can, can, I wouldn't be so sure because Canada will not go down easily. So I think Canada is an eliminated team, but I think not an eliminated team that will roll over. So uh, really, really in interesting. And I also think that depending on how this goes, this could also have a huge implication of who Spain will, will be playing. And then you, know, you have the Brazil in the background highly interesting and intriguing constellations possible. As for the uh, projected standings, I had to laugh a little bit, but it, it makes a little bit sense. Costa Rica is a little bit more likely to, to get points from Germany than, uh, uh, than Japan at Spain. So that's why Costa Rica is ahead of uh, Japan on average. And Germany is just behind them. Uh, but they have one point, they have two points less. So uh, that's why it is one, two, three, four, the way it is with Germany having still the higher chance of advancing. But on average, Costa Rica would get the most points out, which is really, really fine. So we have Spain and Costa Rica through there. And in Group F, uh, Morocco again with the on paper easier um, result um, against Canada. Easier opponent against Canada uh, is probably also favored now to win this group, uh, meaning that uh, the bracket changes slightly. Belgium is out of the picture. So we had the team that actually was finished third um, is now completely, re uh, no, was fourth, uh, is now completely replaced by Portugal, who uh, would go on into the semi final. We would have a semi final with both the superstars from the past uh, decade. So, and uh, meeting in the third place playoff. So uh, that would be in 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 interesting. I don't think Costa Rica will make it through, but what about the Morocco-Costa Rica round of 16 matchup? Costa Rica would not deserve that, honestly.
But you know, it is still a possibility. Uh, as for the overall fa favorites, uh, Belgium now rattled down. Uh, Germany is still in the running, now top eight. Uh, having a 51% chance of uh, progressing, it was around 30 before, so uh, that improved their chances significantly. It's still bronze, France, Argentina, Spain, England. Personally, I would put Argentina even lower than Spain, but you know, we gotta see. We have tomorrow a set of fixtures. Uh, we start early with Cameroon against Serbia. South Korea against Ghana is a game that I will see very little of and I probably will not see the beginning of Brazil against Switzerland, but I think that is the first intriguing one. Neymar is out. Neymar is out and that will be interesting. Um, and then we have Portugal against Uruguay, which to me is one of the biggest clashes in this first round because the winner will not, most likely not face Brazil in the round of 16. So this is for a deep run in the, in, in, in the tournament. It's a straight shootout between the, all those two. Whoever wins this one has a chance to go far in the tournament. Whoever loses this one is likely to go out to Brazil. It's as easy as that. So yeah, that was it for me from the World Cup uh, for today. We have one more long day and then finally we get to something more normal. Really looking forward to it. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.